Hey, 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 it's time for another out of this world story from our space. Wife cheated. I'm so angry, I'm scared of myself. So I'm a bit lost. It's been about two weeks since I found out. I've been suspicious for a while, lots of red flags, but nothing definite. I decided to confront her, and her reaction? Irrational anger. How can I accuse her of something like that? She would never cheat. Made me sure. I snooped on her phone and computer, but couldn't find anything. So I bought some small cameras and placed them around the house. Then I went to visit some friends over the weekend. I grew up in Norway, close to the Swedish border. I met my wife in Sweden. I was 20 and she was 21, and she had a three-year-old kid when we met. We hit it off, and I have been that kid's dad for the last 11 years. I love that guy. I consider him my son. We've been married for six years, not that it matters. Long story short, I went home early when I knew she wouldn't be there and watched the footage. Sure enough, there she was, doing adult stuff with another guy. I recognized him as a work colleague, Theodore. We were friendly with him and his wife. I used to believe seeing red was just a figure of speech, but I was seeing red. I have never been that angry. I'm actually a very mellow guy. I never really get angry, but I just lost it. I hit the walls, I kicked the bedroom door so hard it flew off its hinges and smashed the glass table we had in the living room. I bit the inside of my cheek, I didn't even notice, but when I screamed, I sprayed the wall and floor with blood. At some point, I managed to hit my head pretty hard and that snapped me out of it. I looked at the carnage, and I knew I just had to get out of there. Had my wife walked in at that point, I think I would be in jail. In the best case scenario for domestic violence, and in the worst case, for murder. I quickly packed a suitcase with essentials in my laptop. I work with simulation and modeling and my computer is custom and I need that to do my job. I sent a copy of the video to Theodore's wife. I didn't really write anything in the message apart from, your husband is cheating with my wife. I met my son just outside her apartment complex. I gave him a hug, told him I would always love him, but that his mother was cheating on me so I had to leave. I really regret telling him, he shouldn't be burdened with that, but I wasn't really myself at that time, it just came out of me. I went to the border. I wanted to go see my family in Norway, but they didn't want to let me cross due to COVID. I've been renting a cheap Airbnb. I'm working, but I'm like a sobby. I haven't talked to my wife. The only person I have responded to is my son. He's been asking me questions. I've been honest with him as far as possible that I don't know what is going to happen next, apart from divorce. I've been trying to find a good lawyer. I've received hundreds of messages from my wife and her part of the family. I haven't responded to any of it. My parents are the only ones that know on my side as far as I know. I don't want to talk to my friends because they are friends with my wife as well, so I don't really have good support at the moment. I'm afraid if I talk to her or see her again, I will lose it and do something I can't take back. I also don't want to lose contact with my son, but I have no idea where to even start. I'm still boiling with rage and I don't know how to get past that. I need to respond to my wife at some point, but I'm so angry that I don't think I'm capable of being rational. I just wanted to try to write this out and see if that helps. So far, I would say it's made no difference at all. Let's shake in with some comments before another update. Simon Temfer 1 says, Never put your hands on a one in anger, you'll lose your freedom. Doesn't make sense to sit in jail with a bunch of stinking fellas for months. Anger is a natural feeling when hurt. Maybe you could speak to a professional. Work out these feelings. Fun in 420 has a thought. Honestly, this is a good reason to stay no contact. Until you can master your anger, being around her is a very bad idea. Respond to her by email. Explain that all contact must be in writing for now. It allows you to assert at least some control of the situation. It may also give you stuff that you can use in court, depending on what she's sending. Save everything. Record a list of when she calls, but don't answer. Save texts and voicemails. If you do end up talking to her and your son, keep records of when, how, and what was said. If you do send her anything, keep records of everything that was said and how. Don't give her ammunition to use against you. I'm sorry that she decided that sex with a coworker was more important than your marriage. This is not your fault. Don't accept any of that. Load up on facts. Prove your anger by destroying her calmly and rationally in court. You are the aggrieved party here. Don't sink to her level. Update 1. Mini update. Wife cheated. I am so angry I am scared of myself. I'm doing better. 
I actually visited a cage fighting club. I should really stress that I don't know how to fight at all. I'm not really in great shape. The few times that I ended up in a fight in my youth, I've had my ass beaten badly. I talked to them and explained the situation. They were actually really friendly and eager to help. First, they made me work out for two hours, and when that didn't take the edge off my anger, they put me in the ring with a very experienced fighter. It was clear he was really gentle with me, and even though I did my best, I didn't even give him a workout. It's pretty clear he let me punch and kick him, but he easily blocked whatever I threw at him. The few times I managed to land a blow with a little bit of force, he was quick to give me a smack back. Since I have no clue what I'm doing, his gentle tacks slapped me around hilariously. He would always ask if I was okay before proceeding again. He even apologize a few times for hitting me during her little session when he thought he had maybe hit me too hard. Imagine that, apologizing for hitting the opponent in a fight. He clearly didn't see me as an opponent at all. I doubt he would see me as a threat ever. I have a newfound respect for people who know how to fight, and I am determined to learn it. These guys were the chillest people I've ever met. I want to be as calm as them. My little fight helped a lot. It really took the edge off. I don't have that burning anger. I'm still pissed, but now it's manageable. I will go back for training and more beatings. Still, I don't trust myself to meet my wife. I have talked to my son. I told him that no matter what, we would be okay. I consider him my son no matter what happens between his mother and me. I think he really appreciated that. I've talked to a few common friends and her parents. Apparently my wife has become sort of unglued. She's been calling and talking to everyone at all hours, day and night. She's apparently confessing everything to almost everyone, and even offering money to anyone that could put her in touch with me. I was considering only speaking to my wife via a lawyer, but I can't afford that. So I've asked my cousin to act as a go-between. I gave her a few questions to put forward, so we'll see where it goes from there. I plan to contact the partner's wife next week as well. Some Redditors strongly suggested that I talk to my wife and tell her that if I can adopt my son, I will consider reconciliation. But I would never do that. I will not use my son as a pawn in anything, ever. As things stand now, I would love to adopt him, but only if he asks me to. And only if I am sure it's what he wants and that he isn't influenced or pressured by anyone. I will get through this, I think. I have received so much good advice on here. I feel like I have a plan now to move forward with. One quick comment from SickRM. I would talk to a lawyer about an adoption. Maybe the laws are different in your country, but that could get you on child support in the States. Your soon-to-be ex is someone who could turn nasty and try to drag you to court repeatedly if you get on child support. Take your time and keep going to the club. Sounds like it's a great outlet. Update 2 I started calling my son twice a day, after my last post. He would always tell me everything was okay, but I guess it really wasn't. I was focused on trying to get myself under control. I started going to individual counseling, that helped some. But what really changed things is when I went to try boxing. The first place I visited was kind of grimy and run down. Still, the five guys that were there seemed to have this amazing camaraderie going on, and I really, really, really wanted in on that. I wanted to belong there badly. They all told me I had to talk to the old man. He was the owner of the place. Apparently, he decided who could join or not. They all had a lot of respect for him, so I was kind of apprehensive. Let's just say that the old man has an abrasive personality. To begin with, he just listened, but once he started talking, I was quickly getting more and more agitated. There wasn't anything I can really put my finger on. Everything he said was true, and maybe that's what angered me. Or maybe it was the tone. Like, every question or sentence was an accusation of sorts. The old man made me feel like I was not good enough to become a member of his club, and I suddenly found myself in a position of argue with him, for him to let me prove that I was worthy. I still haven't figured out if he was just an a-hole or some kind of genius. That said, the old man has really affected my life in a very positive way, even though he is a very uncomfortable to be around. I'm starting to see why people have such respect and admiration for him. The old man has helped me understand why I was so angry and how to think more clearly moving forward. It's a story in itself, but this is already getting long, so back to the main issue. A few days after my post, about 20 minutes after, I had talked to my son. He called me back. He was crying, and he apologized for lying to me. He lied when he said everything was okay at home. He went on to tell me that my wife was just sitting in front of the TV, staring at it, even if he turned it off. He didn't have any food to eat. The house smells, and the only thing he had eaten in the last two days was some sandwiches a friend's mother had made for him when he visited. Of course I immediately rushed home. I could smell the rotten garbage in the hallway even before I got to the door. The house was an absolute filthy mess. 
It clearly hadn't been cleaned since I left almost a month ago. The floor was covered in crumbled up sheets of paper, overflowing dirty dishes in the sink, broken glass on the floor, rotten garbage smell, absolutely disgusting. I went to check on my son first. I had picked up a burger for him on the way over. I asked him to stay in his room and eat while I go and talk to his mom. I assured him everything would be okay. I was home. I was going to take care of him. He cried and hugged me for a bit before I went to check on his mother. That hug felt so good. I had missed him so much. I am never leaving him again. My wife sat staring at the screen like my son had described it to me. What he didn't tell me was how terrible she looked. She had lost a terrifying amount of weight. She was just skin and bones. Her eyes were sunk into her head. Dark rings, lifeless skin, cracked lips, messy, dirty hair, filthy clothes. I grabbed a chair and set myself down between her and the TV. The smell coming off of her was absolutely terrible. There was a bucket on the floor. Later found out it was half full of a week old vomit. I felt a deep pain for her. I wanted to protect her, help her, make her better. For a while, I completely forgot what she had done. Seeing her like this was really painful for me. I guess in some ways, I still love and care for her, despite what she has done. That fact kind of terrifies me. Something is wrong with me, I think. I don't know what to say to her, to be honest. She was clearly not all there. She actually asked me if I was real. When I said yes, she broke down crying in a way I've never seen anyone cry before. Her crying, or wailing is probably a better word, was so loud it sort of startled me. Without warning, mid-scream, she either fell asleep or passed out. I put my Fitbit on her arm because I don't really know how to take someone's pulse. Her heart rate was varied up and down between 100 to 150, so I figured that's probably not good. I made sure she was in a comfortable position on the sofa, and I wiped the snot off her face before I ran and asked our neighbor for help. They were happy to look after our son while I took her to the hospital. She's been there for seven days now, I think. I'm a bit blurry on the days, to be honest. I visited once, but she got so upset from seeing me that the doctors recommended that I don't visit her for now. They have no diagnosis for her yet, and they have no idea of when or even if she would come out of it. I have been focusing on taking care of my son since I have made sure he has regular individual counseling, and he looks like he is doing better for now. There is no doubt he has been traumatized by this. I am drowning in guilt for my part in causing him this pain. I have been in contact with a lawyer to try to get custody rights for obvious reasons. I don't know how that will work out. I have also prepared for divorce, but I am holding off for the time being. It took us several days to clean the house. I decontaminated the fridge with bleach, and it still smelled like rotten food, so Asha had to get a new one. I also found that my wife had taken all my dirty laundry into bed and made a body shape of it. It had some additions to make it anatomically correct, and it's kind of disturbing, to be honest. I looked through all her papers that she left all over the house. It's incoherent nonsense for the most part. Some pages have dates and times. I can't understand most of it apart from some pages that have long lines of sorry, sorry, sorry written on it. Most pages with text just transition into a weekly line in the middle of a sentence. I don't know what to do. My anger is completely gone. Replace my sadness of the situation for the trauma and pain inflicted on my son. I feel bad for my wife, but I also understand why I was angry and how I have changed to deal with the pain. I have left a huge piece of myself behind, and she caused that. I don't know if I have it in me to forgive that. A big part of my personality was being a good husband and provider for a long time. That part of me was mortally wounded by her affair. I left that part of me behind. It was just too painful to keep. It's too early to say anything about where we end up as for now, all avenues are open. I'm still hurting and confused. I will just continue to try to rebuild my self-esteem and my self-image of my masculinity. If my wife comes out of it, I will talk to her and see where I go from there. Right now, I need to focus on my son. I need to make sure he is okay. Sorry it's not anything spectacular like the other stories I've read on here with principled confrontations and epic revenge. I'm exhausted and sad. I don't know what to do. It was all so clear-cut in my mind before I came back. Now I just can't see any good ways forwards. One comment from E.W. Sift is some word I can't read. Don't be confused by your feelings. When we deeply love someone, it's hard to completely put that aside and no longer care. That's called humanity. She had a huge confrontation with reality and it overwhelmed her with the reality of what she did. You're a good man to see to her health and to take care of your son. You're also doing well to understand and control your anger. I don't think you left the good husband and provider behind. It's hurt and may be hiding inside you for now. I hope you'll agree that leaving the angry part of you behind is good for you. 
I would suggest you not rush into divorce proceedings. You can always do that. What's important now is your wife's health and your son's well-being. You have a lot of people here who have genuine concern for you. Please keep us updated.